Hi everyone, welcome to this session. My name is Geetha. Together in the next 10 minutes we'll learn about serverless stream processing with Apache Kafka, KSQL DB and AWS Lambda. Before we get started, a few words about myself. I am an Enterprise Solutions Engineer at Confluent. I provide technical guidance, design, advice and thought leadership to key Confluent customers and partners. So let's get started. It seems like now more than ever developers are surrounded by a sea of terminology. But what does it really mean? Do we really need to know all these buzzwords and marketing terms? Uh, I believe we truly have to understand the real power to help achieve the development goals faster and with minimum development and infrastructure management. In this talk, I will define what serverless stream processing is, and it describes arguably the most important pattern to build the event streaming applications with KSQL DB and AWS Lambda, one where you separate the stateful data operations from stateless business logic. But before we do, do that, I'd like to introduce you to Confluent, which is, which is really the creator of Kafka. And we are pioneering the new category of infrastructure with the data in motion paradigm. So Kafka has solved many use cases in the streaming, use, streaming, use, streaming space, but Confluent is really different because our products are, are, have three core attributes that define us. Confluent is really cloud native, complete and everywhere, meaning that you can deploy Confluent on cloud provider of your choice, bare metal, virtual machine and or on-premise hardware. It, it is really agnostic and it is complete because we are an enterprise grade product, which is end to end. And it is, it is more than a product, it's a platform. Um, we are catering to multiple personas like developers, architects, DevOps engineers and executives where Developers are really focused on building apps and connectors. We want to take away that from them. So we've built 120 connectors for them and clients that are beyond just Java. And with the familiarity of SQL, SQL, developers are finding it much more easier to navigate Kafka ecosystem. And DevOps, DevOps architects really want a solution that is that really enables automation and tooling that to enhance the Kafka's performance and elasticity. And we have taken that into account and we have built something that is out of the box. And we also have an enterprise grade security features like RBAC, ACLs, and data compatibility and global re resilience in the form of cl cluster linking. All of that is powered by our world-class support, with which we take complete pride in. Because this talk is about how KSQL DB, um, part of Kafka's um, ecosystem, is going to be serverless, it is serverless and how it, it integrates with AWS Lambda, and the combination is really powerful, we need to know about KSQL DB. So KSQL DB is this database purpose built for streaming applications and very strictly um, relevant to Kafka. And it allows you to develop application that will respond in real time to events that are occurring and streaming into Apache Kafka cluster or Confluent cluster. So KSQL DB provides you the ability to build these applications with no code approach. Instead, you use something developers from a wide variety of backgrounds are very familiar with, which is SQL. That's why it is called KSQL DB. Um, obviously, there are use cases that our enterprise customers are really fond of using KSQL DB for, like data exploration, streaming ETL, um, monitoring their real-time um, infrastructure data, um, IoT data, and log events and whatnot. And finally, there's you know this is one use case which you're proud of is materials views, because how you'll we'll see how you can achieve an um, an expose and continuously updating set of results. That's what streaming is about, right? You have these events that are coming in real time flowing events, you want a continuously updating result set of data to external applications living outside of Kafka ecosystem. And now coming back to settling back to the concept of serverless, it is not new. It's it's just that developers, some of them don't know the meaning. Um, meaning that serverless doesn't mean that you don't need a server, which means that you just focus on building applications and not maintaining servers. And that the, the provider, like a Lambda will take care of building infrastructure for you, maintaining environments for you. And this approach is tremendously beneficial for business because it, 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 it centers down the focus on the core issues and not the ceremony of really <clears throat> building self-hosted applications. So there is this concept of stateless and stateful processing. You probably already know this, but it's really important to know the difference between them um, in order to understand a true serverless business logic. 
So sir, stateless operations are one form of serverless business logic where um, it, they're fairly simple because you don't stir the state beyond the lifespan of that function call. All the data necessary to process the event is contained within the event itself. So that, for that reason, stateless processing is simpler and easier for that reason. Uh, for example, predicate function, right? You invoke that function with either true or false and the result is returned based on the given condition like value is um, uh, equal to success or failure. And calling this method over and over uh, will also result in the same thing because you're not doing anything new, no, no state is told. But this type of functionality lacks context and so you really can only use this task for filtering the events and whatnot, but not um, eventual, eventually uh, sending the state of this event on the next event because you're not really storing data uh, or state of that store. So in this case comes the uh, requirement for stateful processing, which is which is slightly different from stateless because stateful processing applications like KSQLDB um, are a little complex because they store state. Um, a basic example for this is aggregation. For example, you want to keep the track of failed uh, login attempts. Uh, after a certain login attempts are coagulated, you want the application to perform some sort of action. You can only perform this action if your application keeps the keeps the track of the state of the previous events. And this is done by KSQLDB. And it is done in a very fault tolerant way, which is in place and make sure the state can be quickly restored even when the local store gets wiped out. KSQLDB has something called as RocksDB, which powers all of these operations. Um, I want to also touch upon function as a service, which is the ability to create discrete chunks of code available uh, that is available and to run in response to certain events. So the developers can focus on the specific use case and write code targeted to solving that specific use case. Um, and this is ongoing or sporadically occurring. That only occurs, um, you know, the functional as a functional service providers traditionally pair this execution model with pay as you go billing model because it makes sense and it's more attractive to workloads that are running intermittently. And the idea is that you create your code upload it and attach it to a triggering event and your code only executes when it needs to. Otherwise, it just sits dormant and your function is not executed. Um, it is very highly attractive because it incurs no charges during this downtime. You only pay for your function invocation and execution. And now coming to AWS Lambda, it is not new. It doesn't need introduction. It is a serverless compute platform which runs a code without provisioning and managing services, um, which is a classic example of function as a service. And uh, and now if you see AWS Lambda will take care of everything everything other than maintaining application, everything underneath like scaling your number of active instances when the load is high or low, determining the optimum number of computing power that is needed for your code and get the job done. This is all what AWS Lambda does. If you look at it, both KSQLDB and AWS Lambda deliver on the promise of serverless applications. With both the technology, you can strictly focus on achieving a specific business goal and don't worry about the computing power. Um, if you see in this diagram, it, it illustrates the high-level end-to-end overview of solution where uh, streaming application, streaming events come into Kafka, a topic hosted on Confluent Cloud, and eventually all this data is written to AWS's Amazon DB, uh, Dynamo DB, with via AWS Lambda. Uh, this way, with this direct integration, the Kafka topics can now trigger a Lambda function and process the data downstream directly. So we, we did this with the help of an example application that we've built. If you want the code for this, I'll give you the GitHub link and please hit, uh, please reach out to me. Um, the, the idea is that this is an end-to-end -end example of integrating KSQLDB application with AWS Lambda, uh, which is a two-way communication. KSQLDB performs some work and writes a result to a Kafka topic. The Lambda function then does more processing on the result and writes the results back to another topic um, or, or same topic on Confluent Cloud. Um, and then KSQLDB has additional long running queries to analyze the results of Lambda output. So the application is running on Confluent Cloud, obviously. This is a stock trade application where the stock trade stream represents simulated stock, uh, stock trade. Um, there is a SQL code that is written to create a table out of the streams. And then and after the table is created, KSQLDB then performs uh, outer join, a left outer join um, to create a stream table join. Um, this join actually enriches the stock trade data with the user data to execute the trade. Um, we use a left outer join so that we always have the trade information regardless if the user information exists or not. This is where the stateful feature comes into uh, place where 
Um, we, there is this killer feature of KSQL DB. It has rocks DB, which persists the records to local disk. And, and by using an embedded local store, KSQL DB can maintain a running status of a stream state by constantly updating the materialized view. And also, KSQL DB ensures that your state is durable through the use of change log topics. When KSQL DB is writing stateful results to KSQL uh, rocks DB, the same record is persisted to change log topic also. In the case of a failure of local disks or local store is wiped out, you still have your change log topic from which you can restore the state of the event and you can rebuild the rocks DB out of it. And this is how KSQL DB is achieving the fault tolerance that it guarantees. And coming to the scaling and performance, as you probably know, AWS Lambda provides the ability to seamlessly scale and the, in the face of increasing demand, it aut automatically progress, um, monitors and progresses of the underlying consumers for Kafka. It will spin up the number of Lambda instances that are required for this also. Uh, in Kafka, if you have one consumer for one partition and there's eventually uh, a Lambda instance attached to it, if you need more, uh, AWS can do it for you. Um, We've also performed a load test for you uh, for, for this use case where there are 100,000 partitions and how Lambda is really dealing with that. And if you want how those results are, those were astonishing. And Lambda truly delivered what they promised to. If you want to know about it, please touch base with me and I'll, I'll give you the GitHub link for that. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I hope it provided you a glimpse into what a st serverless streaming application is like with KSQL DB and AWS Lambda. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.